My name is Isaac Justice Bidiakon, a broadcast journalist with the EIB Network and also administrative manager for Asantehini Otun Force 82, the second charity foundation. I'm pleased to host uh, my African brothers in diaspora who are in Ghana to visit some of our cherished tourism um, areas. Um, we'll go, zoom straight into the interview. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Ghana. Good, brother. I'm sure this is not your first time of coming to Ghana. Uh, yes, uh, this is actually not my first time. It's uh, my 16th time to Ghana, 1-6. And uh, all 16 times I've brought a group of people here from the smallest of eight to the largest of 43. So, with the 16 years that you have been coming and 16 to... tours uh, in 12 years. Wow. That's, 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 that's amazing. What have you seen in Ghana that have made you so attractive that always you want to come down to come and see what is going on in the country and some of the things because I know most of you in the diaspora have been reading books, history about Ghana, some of the interesting tourism sites. What has caught your attention in doing all this? Absolutely, it's a, it's a simple thing. And first of all, family, I've been to nine African countries and let me name them because when people ask me, you know, is this, this Ghana, Ghana? And I was like, well, I've been able to compare eight other countries to Ghana, uh, which is, you know, which, so I've been to uh, Senegal, Gambia, Ghana, Togo, Benin, that's five, South Africa, Kenya, uh, uh, Ethiopia, and Egypt. And those are fairly very beautiful African countries. But when you're from the African diaspora, there's a struggle for the African diaspora. Number one, why are you in the African diaspora? You're in the African diaspora, more than likely. People like myself that was born in Jamaica, our ancestors were stolen from Ghana or formerly the Gold Coast or in that region that we call West Africa. And you know, when you've been stolen uh, from your homeland and you're looking to return, uh, then you know, you're, you're looking at different things. But for some of us that doesn't look at you know, Ghana specifically, doesn't know where they may specifically be from, and they're looking at the entire African co continent and they say, why Ghana? I'll explain it like this. Uh, number one, the first president of Ghana, which is one of the greatest Pan-Africanists of all time, Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah had a strong connection with the African diaspora and when he became president, he incorporated the energy of the African diaspora, but also he incorporated the energy of the African continent. So right there, that's a strong foundation right there. The only African president that I've been able to this have that mindset about the entire continent and the mindset about the entire diaspora and actually put programs in place and things in place and invite us to the country of Ghana. Other president I remember was uh, Haile Selassie from uh, Ethiopia uh, which created the opportunity uh, called, called Shashamani Land. But uh, beyond that, uh, and then after Kwame Nkuma, later on we had Jerry Rollins that came to, you know, came to Jamaica, came to America, came to different parts of the diaspora and reached out to us. So you have two presidents right there. And then also you have the Elmina and Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeons, the biggest forts that have held our people captive uh, before they were transported across the Atlantic. Uh, and that had, so those have a sim significant connection. And I'm from Jamaica, so a lot of the things you hear, Nani and you hear certain things that are tree. We, it's a part of our local, a part of our local dialect, Patois. Uh, so, you know, so it's like so many things and then for those who are born in America, all the things I just mentioned connects them. So when I did my research to talk to Africans in the diaspora, mainly African Americans, um, it, was, it was only a few countries that brought their interest and overall it was Ghana and then maybe one or two other countries. It was you know, Senegal stood out, uh, you know, Kenya, South Africa, but not much uh, really. And then you know, Ghana has those colors, the colors red, black, green and gold. And people may look at it as just a simple color, but that color represents us, our struggle. You know, red for the blood of our ancestors, green for the land of our people, black for our color, our, our, our struggle, and gold for the gold and all the resources that were stolen from the continent. You know, so those are those significant connection. Then you have the, one of the biggest population of Africans in the diaspora on the continent from you know, that, that they're in Ghana. And when you think of other countries, they don't, they're not in all these other countries like it is. So, and then Ghana is a tropical paradise. Everything grows. And people like myself, it reminds me of Jamaican and African Americans. It reminds them of like Florida. And so Ghana's have, and then when we come here, the energy of the people, the food, 
And some of the food is similar to what we eat in Jamaica and what we do in the South, in, uh, in, like where I live at in Georgia. So it's like I can go on and on. There's so much things, but I literally cannot say that about many other countries. You know, and I, I build an entire itinerary around the country to where you know, we go to restaurants owned by Jamaicans, owned by African Americans, business, and then Ghanaians. So they get a chance to get a, get, a, get a connection of the people who are repatriated and also our Ghanaian brothers and sisters that are here doing business. So our entire itinerary is built around us connected with our Ghanaian connection and our African diaspora connection. So it makes it very special. And I couldn't think of a, another perfect connection other than Ghana. So now you've been in Ghana for some few days now. Do we know some of the areas that you have visited and what are some of the significant things you've seen there? Oh uh, yes, uh, we did our, our we, we spent four days in Accra. So the first day is a travel day. We get there now, we just settle. But we, the, we have three days out. So the first days out that we used to do, when we go out, we go to Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Arts and Culture Center, W.E.B. Du Bois. Those are three of the main highlights for us when we do our city tour. Uh, the Nkrumah Memorial Park, it, all great legends should have a park dedicated like that. It's just a full, it's like my, it's actually, honestly, it's my favorite site on the African continent. You know, because it represents a legend. Uh, W.E.B. Du, du Bois represents an African from the diaspora in America that went through his struggles and realized later on in his life that he needs to be in Ghana and be as impactful as possible. So it's a good place to connect. And the Arts and Culture Center is just wonderful because you can get everything from there based on the things that different uh, Ghanaians around the, the country has put together. Uh, you know, so it represents. So that's right there alone is incredible because we're able to buy a lot of things that we can redecorate our homes with. Uh, then another the second day we go up to the mountains. Uh, we go up to the Avery Botanical Garden, Avery Wood Carving Village. We also have an orphanage uh, school in Tutu Mountains uh, that we've been connecting with since 2007, um, helping you know, the young students and children doing, doing the best we can do. So it's you know, that right there. And day three, we went to Prom Prom. We have a friend called Jerry Johnson. He has the Memorial Wall, which has 90 large portraits of our ancestors from the diaspora and also our ancestors from the continent. Uh, and these have become like special connection. And those are just the, what we did in Accra for the four days. And then we had some wonderful nightlife. This, you know, it was really a special time. Now, you keep talking about Kwame Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah. Oh, yes. In Ghana, uh, many do not cherish him as our African brothers in the diaspora. Right. What is so special about Kwame Nkrumah that you cannot forget about the name Kwame Nkrumah? And one of the big, biggest thing he did when he put that black star right in the in, right in the actual flag family, that black star is a representation of our struggle and it's a connection to Marcus Garvey Black Star Line and it's also showing that we are the black stars of Africa, you know, us as black people. Uh, you know, so it's many significant things, but also Kwame Nkrumah just had leadership skills and he had the heart and, and to, you know, and maybe some people look at him as, you know, he's trying to be the president of the entire African continent and African diaspora, but sometimes you actually need something like that and, uh, you know, other people may not see that as, you know, as that, but sometimes you need that kind of leadership, a bold leadership to where you know, where even though mistakes are made, people like myself, yourself, will learn from them and we'll be able to work and come together. Uh, and it just, it, it just took someone with that boldness to do it. And the fact that he was educated in the African diaspora is special for us because now we feel like we have a representation that's going to represent us and the African continent and us on the, in the diaspora. Uh. Spending a few days in Accra, visiting the tourist centers, were you impressed with how Ghanaians treated the, the famous Brazilian of Kwame Nkrumah? Uh, yes, especially the guides. The guides are very passionate and they know all of the history. Uh, so, you know, we just take in as much as we can take in and ask questions and, you know, we just use it more as an inspiration to do many other things. Um, so, you are impressed with how Ghanaians are treating him now because now they have <coughs> a national holiday that we used to used to celebrate him, his birthday has been cancelled by the current government. Um, when wow. you go to some of the areas, some monuments are, have, have been treated back. All these days, it means that we those in Ghana do not cherish him that much. But when you go to the diaspora, everybody wants to say good things 
about Kwame Nkrumah, what do we have to do as a Ghanaian to actually project the, the legend who led Ghana's freedom and that expanded to some parts of the Africa? I mean, yes, some, some things um, would be nice if it was, I did see the statue that had removed. And yes, you know, over the period of time, you know, you, you, you've seen the, the struggle, but um, I feel like Ghanaians will appreciate it more in the future. As a matter of fact, I thought Ghanaians will appreciate it more, more. I didn't know about the cancellation of the birthday celebration and things like that. Uh, but the park itself, it's not been upkeep the best, but, uh, you know, you can, but, uh, but also it hasn't been shut down or closed or anything. So it's a struggle that we can fix. Uh, you know, we did see certain things that need to be touched up and things like that. So the people in charge, I don't feel like they want to do as much as they can, but I feel a general energy from, especially the young energy of people, they're really interested and really want to see that energy carry on. Uh, and, and it's probably a little difficult because, like you say, we're from the diaspora and we look at Kwame Nkrumah as just one of those incredible person who lived in America and went back home to his country and led independence. Well, my good friend Juma in the evening told me that a lot of African American in the diaspora are relocating back home to Ghana. Some of them have secured their permits that will enable them to stay in Ghana forever. Uh, what have you seen so special about Ghana and that most of you want to relocate back into the country? Number one, you're dealing with a beautiful tropical African country that you can actually, that you already have, you know, a lot of us have a lot of friends here and, you know, everywhere I go I have, you know, I have people that I have built relationship with. So it makes it a little more easy and then the energy that you get from the Ghanaians is respectful, welcoming and so all of that uh, helps. But at the same time too, it's, um, it's, you know, it's a perfect located country uh, to where you can, you know, you get a piece of land, build your home or build your community. So seeing those opportunities and being able to have people that are here to help us and make a world of a difference. If Ghana was one of those countries where you didn't have a lot of energy from the African diaspora, and you know, it may not be the same as what it is, but um, I just feel like it's a good thing. And you know, and, you know I mean, from the tr everything I keep on saying is tropical because the weather is important for us. Some of us live in places where it's extremely cold, and you know, and you know, Georgia is not that cold in the U.S. But at the same time, too, it's not, you know, it's not the tropics like uh, Ghana. So that environment alone itself, you know, good access to beaches, everything grows in this country. Uh, you have culture, you have, you know, family environment. You know, you have, you know, you have, you have a, a organized cultural system of how family treat each other. And also in America, you're going by the European system of how they want everything done. If you have issues, you have to go to court and you have to do certain things. And some villages understand that the community solve their own problems. They're not taking them to the court in Accra. You know, so all of those things are things that we have been able to appreciate. And ultimately, we see the fact that we can work together with our own brothers and sisters from, you know, from Ghana. And all these things that I've mentioned before, it all just makes it this reasonable and organized to do it. And it, just, it makes me excited to keep coming because, number one, and I know I talk about the dungeon, those things. All those things are the same kind of reason over and over uh, that I keep saying. Now, you keep coming here. You've been coming to Ghana for the past 12 years, right? right. Uh, what do you think we can do to make Ghana better? Well, the biggest thing I see is uh, to incorporate more opportunities for the uh, Africans in the diaspora. Uh, one of the biggest issues that we've always had on the African continent is the brain drain. We have lost our best people on the continent for like the last several hundred years to, to, uh, you know, to uh, enslavement, slavery, through you know, scholarships, through offered opportunities. You know, there's, um, if we have a hundred Ghanaian doctors here and there's opportunities in America, America is going to pick the best. And, you know, and so it becomes a situation where the best of our people are there making America and Europe the strong and not as much of them are back here. So. We've been trying to encourage more and more of us by what the program we do, reach out to Africans in the diaspora, with those who have skills and background to be a part of the future. And just like we went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology today, and the university was built so we can raise the best scientific minds to be able to do all the things we need to do. And part of that, you know, we, do, we can get the, those to educate our own people to universities, but also we have a lot of our own people in great fields in America. And so people like myself have market to them saying, hey, 
You guys have spent all your time in the military, all your time in these corporations, and I've given them your heart and soul, and you have made this country the, the best in what it is, because America and Europe can say whatever they want to say, but especially America, but the reason why America is what it is is because a lot of it is because of the black energy from the beginning. Now, we have always been one of the greatest significance of why that place is what it is, even though we don't get the credit. Uh, so we feel like if we flip that around and bring the best of us here to connect with the best of us, we'll be able to solve our problem 100% in Ghana. And eventually when we work together to do the same, we'll be able to solve our problem throughout the entire continent. And in so to where we can reach out to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora and assist them because they're, they're, they're fighting for um, reparations and they want the government uh, to pay for what was done to our ancestors. And they're not going to give us anything unless we make Africa strong to put some pressure on them. So a strong Africa benefits all of us. I'm from Jamaica. A lot of my brothers and sisters want to come here, but we can't. They, they have to get transit visa to go to America or Europe to even come to Ghana. It's not like we can just get a flight from Jamaica to Ghana, which would solve our problems. So most of the issues and problems we have is how people have put things around us, Europe and America, to where it, you know, it, it keeps us disconnected. So us having this conversation, us doing these groups, us building this union, is the goal to solve these problems. Now, do you struggle before you get visas and other permits to come to Ghana? Because we see you as our brothers in the diaspora. We are all black people. And so if I'm coming home, I don't have to struggle before I come home. I think when I attended the Pan-African Congress, I think three years ago in Accra, uh, similar concerns came that if you want to come to Ghana, you have to struggle to, to immigration. You go through a lot before you get your documents to come to Ghana. Do you still go through all these things? Uh, people have told me, the last few people that have been applying for uh, residency have, have told me that, you know, the kind of, you know, someone asked me if, like, do the people want us here? And, you know, I, I just have to be honest with them. I said, you're in, when you're in the flow of tourism, the people are more educated about you coming because, you know, uh, but the average people that are not into tourism and the history of what's going on, they may not clearly understand why we're here, and they may look at things, that, negative things that they see on TV as, you know, as all the black people in America coming to take over and do this, and it's nonsense. The only thing I get from, you do have, unfortunately, you do have some representation of black America that come in and act disgusting and just not correct because they carry their same bad attitude like their white counterparts. But when we bring groups here, we educate everybody to be clear, and as, my, as other people have seen with us, it's been nothing but beautiful energy. Uh, and so we even feel that us doing these things would give our brothers and sisters a chance to get to know us better and at the same time to people like myself as educating our folks in America about Ghana and culture. So this tour book I put together literally is one of the guides to bridge that gap. It really, it really does, you know, it even have a nice little tree translation that will help us you know, do a few basic words. So we write these guides every year for every group, uh, give it to them and also have it available for different people who just want to have a nice little introduction on how they can actually just connect into Ghana and connect with some good people because that's one of the differences also. Sometimes there's things going on in the country and if you and me don't protect the people who want to do good things, then bad people get attached hold of them and next thing you know they lose their money on land and investments. So um, it helps and it also helps when I'm building a relationship with you and uh, many other Ghanaians that see the vision and have an overstanding on why we're here. So I, I feel together we can educate ourselves because we've been so miseducated by using, you know, by, by you know, the, the education system that we have. Even though Ghanaians, Ghana is a black country just like Jamaica, we still teach too much white education. It's a problem with me and I've always told people when we build our community, Everything that we're gonna be now, we, you you want to teach your children the world history, absolutely. But there has to be a focal point on the importance of our history. And there's some things you can teach people. You, I don't think we need a whole lot of European history. I mean, it's you know most of it is treachery, barbarism, and death and destruction. You know what I mean? When you hear about the Romans, the Greeks, the British, the French, their entire history is just nasty and brutal. You know, when you hear about African history, it's more of science. Uh, development um, and you know culture. You hear about Timbuktu. You know you hear about Egypt. And yeah, so, you know I just feel like we just have to take charge of our lives and our future. Now my my, my final question is, uh, what do you think we can do to end 
the, the point is where these Chinese people are overtaking Africa because of the, our rich resources that we are not making good use of. And these Chinese have entered into our space, polluting our water bodies with the, with the aim of mining for gold, cutting down trees and doing all kind of things that African can never do in China. What should we do as a country to protect our natural resources and make good use of it <coughs> to the benefit of the locals? And perfect. I'll just answer that question before I answer that one. I want to let everyone know that we have to think about what China is. You know, at least about half of China you can't live in. The water is polluted. The air is polluted. You know, so you, you're, we're, we're dealing with a country that, that destroyed their own country completely to where they're removing their population and they're putting their population all over the world. So that's already so right up front, we should not trust that. But the way we solve this is union. Um, we got to keep building union together. The Africans and the diaspora, the Africans and the continent have to keep on working together, put our money together, build all the things that we need, and eventually building more factories and you know, being more in a situation where we can develop our roads, bridges, build it. And that's why I talk about the University of Science and Technology, Kwame Nkrumah University, that was changed to that name. It, in a setups like that, and us repatriating that, and us getting the best of the minds to teach, to teach the rest of us, because you have a lot of Ghanaians, brilliant minds, and, but they have some jobs that's paying them $200,000 a year, and maybe if they come to Ghana, they get $10,000 a year. You know, but at the end of the day, it's not all about money, it's about how we're going to work it, because that's, that's one of the things that they that our oppressors have been able to throw at us. Like the Chinese come in, they drop big money, you know? And, you know, but we also have to just say, hey, sometimes us using our little money and little resources is better than just having somebody give us all these things with, you know, with so much attachments to it. You know, to where by the time we finish, we end up, you know, they end up owning everything that we, that's built on the continent legally. You know, to, you know, because they can set you up to make you default on loans. They can make bad agreements with you. Uh, so, the, ultimately, it, us doing, dealing with us, us being with us, us thinking about us, us being all about us, solve every problem that we have. Us dealing with other people is why we have all these problems. We are most grateful for your time. Yes, my brother. Thanks, man. Absolutely. And I, I hope to see you here again next year. Um, tell the people there that Ghana is a beautiful country, they should come back and support us so that we can make Ghana work again. Thanks for, for your time. Absolutely, brother and family.